Happy Midsummer. Oh, true. 21st of June. Today, the longest day of the year. Happy Midsummer, everyone. Alright, set up the gamba real quick. I know you guys like to play with your points and maybe like to play with some other things as well. That is open to interpretation. So, on the left hand side, we have Colorful and Lin in the teal playing the Demon Farseer. Seems like Demon Hunter Blade Master is pretty rarely seen these days. We do have a Blade Master though on KK side Blade and Death Knight. In the previous games, we also saw a lot of TC first from KK. But understandable that he doesn't want to play that into Night Elf because uh, TC does not like the mana burn. No. Nasty, nasty mana burn. Very fast tech over here by Lin. Rushing tier 2, trying to get to tier 2 tech and second hero right away. Late master, oh creeping in the middle already, I didn't even know he could do that that early. At the moment though the demon hunter is creeping the fastest quick level 2 for him, some good tankiness items. He is going to be the prime frontline tank, so beefing him up is quite valuable. Oh and look at that, KK is just sniping the renegades, looks like he may have Done some specific prep work on this map. Big last hit. KK gets it with a wind walk. Fairly easy for him to do here. And the far here is, is he surrounded? No way! Skelly Acolyte's around! Oh, he's stuck there! Oh no, that's so annoying. Has to go for Telly Staff now. Doesn't want to waste the TP for this. Thank you, Benny Gand, with a resub as well. Says, thanks, coach. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Dude, KK has got a wild haircut. He looks like one of those kids from those uh, 90s t kids TV shows. The kid that was supposed to look cool with a spiky hair, you know? And I gotta admit, he does look kind of cool. Night now creeping heavily. 1-0 so far with a good start. He's playing the ghoul opening. He's able to creep fast, level up that DK, and he's not been losing any ghouls. That's, off that's always the big downside or the big risk in 2v2. If you play ghoul opening, and if you're forced into a fight early, you might lose them very fast, especially against things like headhunter armies. One to zero. Oh, struggling to get the surround on the burrow here. Now he does. In his base and trouble right away. Oh, a nice surround. You can see the peons can't really reach. Most of them cannot. Only two are trying to repair, and that is not enough. So the burrow does go down. But the Shadowhunter is here, and that should mean a good number of ghoul kills thanks to the hex. Oh, surround on the Farseer! And he is gonna have to go. Did he go for. I got so confused. It looks like he animated like Farsight or something, but the Farseer goes down, not TPing away. Blade 3, DK3, super strong here with the hero hero target fire. Shadowhunter might also be dead. Although there is a heal salve. Demon High level 3 has to help out. One more hex. Oh my god, the crit almost decapitates him. We also have the mercenaries. Yesterday in the 2v2 we saw tons of mercenaries in this game. Lots of assassins especially, but also high priests at times. Tough start for Lin into this game. Lost the Burrow, lost the Fossier. And this is all before the big undead power spike. On tier 3, with triple hero, possibly, with the orb and all the other upgrades. That's when the undead gets the strongest. That's when the undead is normally the strongest player on the field in 2v2. And that was the quest, uh, the the story. This whole tournament so far for KK and one to zero. 
It was a matter of delaying the game and surviving. And trying not to fall behind. Because if they can get to the late game in an even state, normally the undead, normally the strong late game for 1 to 0 will carry them. Late Master Harass here, very annoying. Super strong items for KK, by the way. Ring, Quelthalas, Claws, Circlets. Did he buy both those circlets? That's pretty expensive, right? But the blade is indeed looking stronger. Hero kill potential could be huge on Team 1 to 0 and KK. Look at the blade. See the attack coming. Can find some early pickoffs. What is there? Doesn't feel super confident yet. He doesn't have a big army yet. Tier 3 just finished. Lich only level 1. Doesn't even have an orb, in fact. Ooh, Demon Hunter. Ooh. Dude, that mana was kind of risky. If the Shadowhunter steps back, pulls off the hex, could have been his death here. We've been seeing quite a bit of Crypt Lord play lately in uh, 2v2 as a third hero for Undead. But of course against Demon Hunter, that is not really what you want. I think a Naga third could be good here for 1-0. to zero. But almost nobody plays that in 2v2, as it seems. Cool Frenzy. About to be done. And here in the middle we might see the first big fight. Orb is finally available. Oh, and the ghouls, you can see, they might just die very quickly. Hex and focus fire on the Demon Hunter, but he has a big invuln. He's very tanky as well with these items. The frontline tank pulling off, uh, you know, holding it the way he's supposed to. Naga, though, she's less tanky. She gets the heat wave. She does survive. But now the frailer units in the bag are getting targeted. Archers and Dryads getting picked on one by one with the Ensnares trying to find kills. And that is working out pretty well so far. Nova comes in. Heal scroll against it. Mana burns in. And 1 to 0 now completely out of mana. This could perhaps be a good fight now if the Demon Hunter has made sure all the mana is gone on the enemy side. 1 to 0's army also has evaporated away. 28 supply only. And this fight seems to be going to Lin and Colorful. Might be able to trap the DK here. Force a TP as well. No, not quite. Not yet. What is there trying to rebuild? He is going for the Crypt Lord after all. And Colorful has the expansion. Coming up. Looking good for Colorful and Lin at the moment. Close to three level ups as well. Yeah, I'm still not so sure about the ghoul opening, you know. It's a good early game for creeping, but it seems like when it comes to the first big fights, it does fall off heavily. Now I got pick off though. That is pretty relevant. And the Crypt Lord is about to join. Seems like that Crypt Lord should, could have been made a lot earlier, to be honest. Wonder Zero was floating a lot of gold there for a while. Next item. What is it? Oh my god, dude. Pick it up, please! <sighs> Sit on the ground. It's Edge. Lich gonna pick him up. Thank you. I guess it was Claws, actually. That's pretty nice. If 1 to 0 could manage to keep the Crypt Lord away from the enemy Demoner, maybe have KK ensnare the Demoner. It could have big impact, <clears throat> but it's pretty hard to manage. They're trying to get level 3 Shadow Hunter for KK, but that is still not enough here from this camp. Ah, no, it is enough. Okay, never mind. That was quite good then. Colorful with strong heroes, but only archers. 
If Lin's frontline disappears, then the archers could quickly be eviscerated as well. Both are angling for the perfect fighting position. Destroyer is starting to be morphed. When is there going, going to upkeep for the first time? At the moment, his levels aren't good yet. That might change later. Cryptor trying to get in position, but gets mana burned right away. Gets off one good impale, but that's going to be the end of it, thanks to the burn. Cryptor on the front line taking a lot of damage for sound protecting him for now. They should be abolished. Oh, blade in the bag, almost going down. Heat wave comes in, and the invuln just saves him at the very last moment. The amount of mana burns, though, are working out so well. Also against the Shadow Hunter, he found beautiful targets. The are now getting ensnared, getting controlled. Blade, low HP as well. So is the Demon. The statues need to heal. The statues are doing a phenomenal job. DK positioning now, quite good as well. Away from the Demon Hunter. Avoids getting burned at the moment. But the Blade is very hurt. The Demon Hunter is still really strong. Still has the Invul Potion. Demon Hunter seems to be the carry in this game. As it seems to me, Blade Master level 4, but almost dead. A demon trying to run away. Level 2 in the Crypt Lord. The passive is kind of nice. Chain Lightning comes in. Blade's still in trouble. Ooh, it's a close affair. Blade has a new invuln, by the way, getting ready to use it when he needs. Shadow Hunter, Clarity running in the back. He wave at the last moment. Demon Hunter in trouble again. Ensnared now. Can he be saved with the staff? Ooh, just in time. Ensnare wore off. Staff saved him. Farseer close to dying a second time. And this fight, very close, might still go towards KK. And 1 to 0 in the end. Late Master there was flirting with death, almost died numerous times. But just barely able to be saved. Good play by them. And now 1 to 0 has truly come online. 4 3 2 levels, very strong. The statue continued support here, super potent in the back of the army. And the Demoner doesn't have an invuln anymore. He's still very tanky. Plus 8 armor and rune bracers and gauntlets. Naga though, not so tanky. Oh my god, she just gets deleted. Coil Nova, bye bye. Farseer in trouble as well with the next end snare. That might be the end. He has to TP away from his main base to the ally. Doesn't have that much supply left though. Same goes for KK. The expansion running for Team Colorful and Lin might not be good enough. They got more gold income, but they're also suffering many more losses now. I'd love to see a shop here for KK. That would be pretty sweet. Making towers? What? There's no way that's better than a shop. Good mana burn, the Shadow Hunter at least. The Kodo Beast though, one of the most important pickoffs, finds that kill right away. Decent mana burn to the archers as well. And those archers go down fast. And this game is indeed now lost. GG is called. 1-0 on KK once again. Their strat kind of remains the same. Survive, 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 stay in the game, don't die, don't fall too far behind. And then 1-0's tier 3 will look tremendous in the end game. It seemed like Colorful and Lin perhaps almost got far enough ahead to be able to outscale 1-0 with the expansion. But it wasn't quite enough. Not quite enough. The early game attack there, taking out the Burrow, taking out the Farseer, definitely paved the way as well to especially hold Lin's momentum. Colorful there seemed to be the carry in this game. Lin couldn't really play to the extent that he wanted to.
map number two is going to be Twisted Meadows. And there, are we going to see different heroes? Death Knight, of course, is going to be the choice guaranteed. I could see Demon Hunter Plate Master, possibly here, instead of Farseer. Always seemed like a pretty good Blade Master map. Colorful is uh, almost certainly going to go for Demon Hunter. He's really good with Demon Hunter. It is his favorite hero, and especially against Undead, that seems to be a necessary hero as well from the with the mana burn. Hex Stomp Call Nova too much for the Demon Hunter. Yeah, they didn't have Stomp, but uh, they did have all the other tools. Yeah, the Demon Hunter never died. The Demon Hunter was super, super tanky. Very, very strong demon there indeed. But the rest of the army, not so much, especially the archers, were suffering hard when the enemy closed the gap to them. Oh, damn! Dude, I totally missed the raid earlier. Kuchen TV with the raid. And a lot of people uh, joining the stream here. Guys, hey, how you doing? Um, the game we watch and enjoy here together is called Warcraft 3. I imagine many of you will know it. And here in the Warcraft All-Star League, we are showing the best players in the world. In this month's June edition, we're getting close to the finals. Over this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're going to have semifinals and grand finals and champions to be determined over the next three days. So if you guys are into Warcraft 3, you can give us a follow and tune in. Thank you, New Slang, with the resub as well. And Fulian, with the resub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. New game pog, yeah, indeed. Warcraft three is a is is is, is a is a mature game, nicely ripened with age, has become a delicacy to all the fans out there. Warcraft three, which is now more than twenty years old, it still kind of sounds crazy to me sometimes when I think about it. Warcraft three, Reign of Chaos came out two thousand two, the expansion. Frozen Throne came out 2003. So we are, yeah, more than 20 years. Isn't that crazy? And I think I played it first in... I'm not quite sure. Probably like... 2006? When I was 15? Maybe 2005. Back then, before I had internet, before I even knew what Reddit was. When I was only playing offline, playing the campaign, the Rexar campaign, over and over and over. And playing uh, Age of Empires 2 and building custom maps. It was called Scenarios, I think, back then. And then I would just build, like, a death maze, always. <laughs> I would put, like... 500 different units, assign them to different teams, and then I would just watch them kill each other on auto attack. And that would absolutely crush my PC back then, which was a very cheap and not very impressive PC performance-wise. I think I had like five frames. It still seemed epic to me, though, the fact that I could summon up these uh, huge battles, these huge medieval slaughters. Them was the days. Oh yeah, with cheat codes as well. I know a couple of friends who still know so many of the cheat codes by heart. Like the Age of Empires 2 cheat codes and also the GTA, GTA San Andreas cheat codes. Like left, right, left, right, down, A, B, A, B, left, right, whatever. Um, my memory is not good enough for that. My memory is quite bad, it turns out. Um, so I forgot all those things. 
Good thing that I forget didn't forget to tap into the game for our second map. One to zero, and KK now leading with one all. My memory has had too many beers. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, demon and a blade this time. That much could be expected. Very good spawn for KK. Ooh, we almost messed up the ogre trap. The little mud golem almost was able to ruin his day. I have seen so many of these goddamn creeps be denied by the burrow. I hope that doesn't happen this time. Oh! Lin stole- wait! It did get denied but it did get denied by the burrow! Dude, I knew it! This happens all the time. And Lin stole the item, by the way. Good scouting. And what looked like a good position for Rock Golem Creep quickly turned around. I guess silver lining here is that at least Lin didn't get the last hit. Demon Hunter with a fast level 2 and only level 1s on the other side. Seems like an excellent start here for Colorful and Lin. That's what they want to have. They want to make sure they don't go down 0-2 in this series. Best of 3? Question mark? No, this is a best of 5. Zero experience on the team. That is kind of crazy. What is this playing the fiend build this time? Ted fiends. Will be a fast tier too. Oh, the blade. Almost in time to steal it. Where are KK's grunts, by the way? I don't know. Oh, the demon is going to be very strong this game. Oh, did you steal the item? Oh, cheeky! <laughs> he stole the item with a DK. He is now very hurt, though. And the demon are quite tanky. Doesn't care so much about these right clicks. One is there just trying to be annoying, trying to slow down the opponent. He needs more fiends to be able to creep properly himself. Yeah, this looks like a huge lead for Lin and Colorful. They have so much more experience. Little steal here though. KK gets that one. Finds himself surrounded. Wait, is he not gonna use this wind walk? What? KK? Oh my god. Waiting for the last split second. That was unnecessarily close. Demoner, about to get level 3. This is a fantastic game for Colorful so far. There it is. Big Master also close to his level 2. The experience difference is insane here. Going for a fast tier 3 is 1 to 0. Only two fiends for a very long time. Colorful with a proxy expo. Looking pretty similar so far to the first map. Oh, and now a creep jack opportunity. If the DK gets hexed, that could be the kill. He's looking for it. Comes out of the shadows, and there is the kill with a speed scroll, and that could be a game-winning kill already. 1-0, to zero, a bit too greedy. Great creep jack. Oh my god, that's both heroes dead. You know, maybe I have to take back what I said earlier. Um, maybe Ted Fiend opening isn't the best to be too. <laughs> Yeah, 
incredible lead for Linen Colorful here. Taking all the camps away now from the enemy side. This Demon Hunter is such a bully. Could be even worse, man. The Demon Hunter items are actually very weak. If he had some rings, maybe a belt or something, this would be even better for Colorful. Speed scroll by KK. He is getting creep jacked right here. TP might be necessary. Oh no, he's trying to go for the kill on the enemy shadow. But there should be a heal wave! Critical strike! Right clicks! Oh, he does get it, actually. Nice execute. It costs him a raider, but that is certainly a good trade for him. And finally some time for one desert to creep. He is so far behind, it is insane. <laughs> Only 36 supplies still. Only now getting the level 2s. I think that should be level 3 for the Shadow Hunter over here. That is pretty good. DK trying to get level 3 as well at the same time. Expansion soon to mine. item for the demon hunter I guess it was the Naga oh you found the root bracers again hallelujah sick demon hunter game here even more so than the first map which was already good once there has finally made it to 50 supply he's got a strong 50 supply army now he's got the fiend destro classic combo but only a weak level 2 death knight dark ranger third I like a lot more than the previous crypt lord Lin also expanding. Supply is still very even. KK has double level threes. That's good. One to zero here is the big liability. Oh, if they catch the statue, that would be huge. But Ensnare Dodge with the Destroyer. Pretty hard to kill these Destros at the moment. Unless they get ensnared. One of them is ensnared. We have Serpent Wards as well. Hey, what? Who's got Serpent Wards? KK has Serpent Wards. Interesting. Team Hunter, though, finding a proper connection to the undead. Mana burn the Death Knight right away. No coils anymore. Serpent Wards trying to take on the Dryads right now. DK finally level 3. Dodges the Code of Devour for now. Demon Hunter being completely ignored for the time being. Cross Amor getting dispelled properly. Shadow Hunter for KK. Uh oh, quite out of position. And the Blade Master as well getting targeted heavily. This blade guaranteed dead since there was no invo potion to protect him. And perhaps this is just a bit too much. Looks like it is. The hero is so strong in the front line. The Blade and Demon Hunter duo uh, team. Looking absolutely sensational here. This was the 2v2. Kind of playstyle that we saw for years and years in WC3L and other tournaments. Night Elf, Orc, Demon, Blade. Very strong brawlers. Oh my god, that Immo Potion. Last second. TP out. Colorful trying to save the Naga. Oh, the Blade Master. You don't want to lose. That's for sure. Supply wise, we are fairly even still. And the Blade has been rest from the tavern. There should definitely be a shop coming now. 
from KK. Caliph, of course, mining. Strong hero levels on Lin and Colorful. Almost everyone's level 3. Level 4, I mean. Shop, I would say. A little bit too late coming here. Hammer Potion needed again. Death Knight in trouble as well. Almost going down. Same goes for the Blade Master. He is not dead yet. But the DK in the back getting hexed. Lin comes in from the other side. And that should be the end. Blade Master might be the next target with the Hex and the right clicks. There's no saving him anymore. He was very tanky with those items, but not tanky enough. And Colorful and Lin get the important win on map 2. To tie up the series. Very important to not go down 0-2. The chances of managing a reverse sweep are very, very slim. Strong game here. Good creeping, good early game uh, game plan, I think, that they had. Nothing too fancy. Nothing too creative. Just a demon hunter creeps up quickly. Make sure he makes use of strong Ancient of War creep. And then uh, gets the levels, gets level 3, gets the boots, dominates the mid game. And then getting the DK kill, the Lich kill, that was almost game already. And yeah, I think on that map specifically... Good opening is needed. Otherwise, you can't contest the green camps in the middle at the start. And those green camps at the start in the middle are very, very important. Map number three now will be the pick for KK and 1 to 0. Before, when I saw them pick this map, I was quite surprised to see that uh, they favored this map. Since normally Turtle Rock is a small map, small maps aren't good for late game tier 3 players. But somehow here it always works out well for them. Especially the DK creeping here normally seems to work out quite well. With a fast level 2 into level 3. And then they get ready for a push if that is coming. And also Turtle Rock a pretty bad map to try to expand with map control. This was what Lin and Colorful did now, twice in a row. They built a strong tier 2 army. They knew they had map control, so they were the stronger force out on the map. They could dominate the map for a while, up until 1-0 reaches tier 3 upgrades. So they used that map control for expanding. But then Turtle Rock, with the expansions so difficult to set up and so difficult to defend, that would be a little more tough to manage. So, down in the bottom right, in the red, we have 1 to 0 and KK 1 to 0 playing a different build again. First it was a cool opening, then it was Ted Fiends with fast hero late Fiends. Now it is very old school, fast Fiend opening with late hero. This is something we never see in 1v1 anymore, but in 2v2 sometimes we still do. And I think I like this quite a bit here. Once you have three fiends or four fiends out, you can fight against the demon hunter fairly well, and you can creep really well if you are left alone. And Lin this time is going for Farseer Headhunters with one grunt at the start. So there's going to be no clear frontline units for Colorful and Lin. It should be Archer's Dryads for Colorful and Headhunters for Lin. That might make for a bit of a weird army to control. We'll see. The Demon Hunter is again gonna look for the fast level 2 here. Good creeping with the Wisp. But unlike Twisted Meadows, the Demon Hunter cannot at all creep so easily to level 3. The Muck Camp Creep on Twisted Meadows is one of the best early games the Night Elf can possibly have in the meta these days.
But then also getting a fast double too. This is quite nice for him. He was able to get two green camps. One of those being on the enemy side. One to zero trying... Ooh, trying to snipe the Ogre Mage here early at the shop. This would be level two for him. But Colorful is on the way. He does get it. Ooh, and gets close plus eight. That is phenomenal for him. This will be great on the Lich later. In the past, there used to be Rune of the Watcher there. Thank goodness that those are gone. But the item, of course, still was his. And you can see how different the game looks for 1 to 0 now. He's got the level 2, he's got a couple of fiends, already he can fight fairly well. The painful thing for him, of course, is that there's a demon hunter here continuously, mana burning him. And now he's getting double attacked by the enemy team. They're looking for some early fiend kills, and they should be able to get at least one of them. Nero Tower not upgraded. That is pretty greedy by 1 to 0. And no dust yet either. Should be buying it now, though. There's actually going to be quite a few archer kills. Two of them going to go down. But another fiend dies as well. The good thing going to zero, though, is with this build, you have lots of fiends. So losing one or two is perhaps not the end of the world. Whereas when you play Ted Fiend build, you have very few fiends only. And every single one is very important. But still, two fiends is two fiends. Oh, and the Farseer Fulin has amazing items. Plus 12 damage. Closing in on level 3. Oh, unlike the Demoner though. The Demoner has nothing. He could be nuked super easily this game. That should be the priority in the fight, I would say. Big master for KK. Ooh, very hurt here. KK made a spirit dodge for just a second, but he cancelled it. Gonna go for walkers now with the torrent totem. Wolf harass into the undead main base. Wow, that is... I haven't seen that in a while. Damn. Good execution as well. Summons them behind the wall. Very annoying for the undead. Oh my god. Double claws plus eight though on the DK. Big item. Big last hit here on the turtle. Looks like they're gonna give it away. Which now finally joining, but not in time to contest that creep. They're gonna have to go for their own turtles. 1 0 tier 3 is slowed down a lot. Late revealed, but not in danger. Bit of a creeping mistake here by 1 to 0. No level 3 DK yet. The Lich was soaking up too much XP. But I guess he's just going to go to the other camp and that should then be enough. But 1 to... Uh, Lin and Colorful are already looking for the attack. 1 to 0 isn't truly ready. No tier 3 for him. Tier 2 only so far. I feel like the demoner has to be the target here. 
Colnova though on the Raider instead. Demon Hunter so far still nicely protected. The Spearling could be actually really strong here. There's still no Dispel anywhere, it turns out. The Naga though is dead. No saving her anymore. 1-0 trying to retreat into the back of the base. Torn Chieftain, level 1, no rings, also pretty squishy. Lots of kills on both sides as it looks. Demon Hunter now level 3. Now he's got a level 2 mana burn. That's big. Blade got level 3. Shadow Hunter I think also got the level up, but he's out of mana. Of course, the Demon Hunter here again doing a good job. Blade on the chase, trying to get a kill, perhaps. But the TC is still protected by the Spirit Link. And the Demon Hunter is burning away more and more. Very well done. The Burrows have to help out. The base build, a little bit problematic. One there cannot retreat into the back of the Orc base. Now he's trying to... Ooh, KK's base here does not seem very well designed, to be honest. Statue important to keep alive and will stay alive. The quick tier 2 push, not giving 1 to 0 any time for the late game. Might be enough here to break through. Fiend goes down, trying to go for the hero kill on the Farseer, but there's a stomp to cover his retreat. The TC, though, is gonna die. Nice surround there, four-pointer. And if they get to the archers, could still be many more kills. A critical strike, endangering the Dima Hunter there as well. Has to TP away. Then also leaving with a teleport. But the trade certainly went in favor of Colorful and Lin. Way more supply after this exchange. Getting involves now, I think, will be very important. Thank you, by the way. Cooler with the first time Prime sub. Welcome. And Tsushine as well with the sub. Colorful and Lin coming back for the next round. Invuln picked up by 1 to 0. And it's still nowhere near tier 3. The amount of this time getting called over right away. Yeah, that's the way he should have been handled. I think, like I said earlier, I think they made a mistake not focusing him hard enough. And he just goes down. Oh, colorful too slow with the staff. Big mistake there. First hero falls, but they're still looking for more kills. The statue should be getting picked off next. That's a big one. Most important unit here on the field. And snare on the shadow, and he is dead as well. This farseer is putting in crazy damage. Farseer has. Almost 13,000. That's way more than everyone else. Lin carrying with the Farseer this game. Strong levels, great items. And so Lin and Colorful take the lead with 2 to 1. Very appropriately, also, our newest resub, Fart Seer. Thank you very much for the 70 months already. The Nankala full coming back strong from the first map loss. Up now, 2-1. to one, As we will move on to the next map, Lost Temple. Can also be kind of a difficult map for Undead, right? You're not strong for a long time, so the Fountain may have to be given up to the opponent. And then the expansion is very easy to set up on this map in the Tier 2 stage. Okay, okay, okay. Two to one. Our score. Can one to zero and KK bring it back? Can they take us to a fifth map? They came 
into the series as the favorites, I would say. Last month in the 2v2 tournament, KKM 1-0 looked very, really strong as well. They finished in third place, where in the third place match they clearly destroyed their opponents. And previous to that, in the semi-final, they had a really close series against Infi and Fly as well. Infi and Fly, who are the reigning champs back-to-back -back of the 2v2. The kings of 2v2 right now. Looks like the Chinese players are dominating 2v2 at the moment. Team Moon and Focus losing their series yesterday to Infi and Fly, but they will still have a chance. They're going to be playing in the lower bracket I think that should be tomorrow. If I'm informed correctly, then the lower bracket semifinal and the upper bracket final should both be played tomorrow. And then lower bracket final and grand final on Sunday. No more Starbuck and Pato in the 2v2. Yeah, sadly not this season. Starbuck was playing 2v2 with Leon. That did not work out for them, unfortunately. But next month, we might see some new teams forming. We might see some new competitors here give it their cha their biggest chance. Their biggest chance, their best shot. That's <laughs> what I mean. Um, if the format sta stays the same, though, the next monthly uh, All-Star League should be in the second half of the year in the second season, so to speak, because normally every year we have two seasons, the summer season and the winter season, and those consist of four separate monthlies. And then we're going to have the summer and winter finals. So uh, if that stayed the same, which it should have, then next up we're going to have the summer finals before then we begin into the winter season. Warcraft also League running the whole year. The biggest competition we have in the scene right now. And now our next map. Map four. And looking at the hero production here, we have one big surprise already. KK going back to TC. TC mass grunts, mass move speed. It was a strat they played many times before, but against Night Elf, oftentimes they wouldn't do it because of mana burn. Now he's still doing it, still playing TC. And he must be aware that it's a very high chance that Colorful is playing Demon, which he is here. So I would say this should be Aura prioritized over Stomp this game. Colorful. Creeping the natural right away. I like that a lot. Quick level 2 for him. Really good Ancient of War creep. And could also open the door for an expansion here down the road. Around the tier 2 stage. So, 1 to 0. And KK creeping together this time. Trying to be safe against enemy harass by joining forces. That means they're gonna be creeping up, leveling up pretty slowly. Having to share experience here. Oh, Lin, kind of greedy. Wants to get the big creep. Wants to get the item. But he couldn't. Death Knight with a coil secures it. And it's the Demon Hunter again. Taking the lead here, experience-wise, so far. On level 2, the TC may have much, a lot of HP, but not much armor at all. Some rings would be very welcome on him. The cool thing about this combo that uh, KK and What Is There showed before is that there's going to be super high move speed later on. When the TC and DK get to level 4, the move speed is going to be 30% bonus on everything, which is pretty sick, especially for Grunts and Raiders. For all the melee units.
DK 2.4, TC 1.9, but look at the Demon Hunter, dude. Level 3 already, so fast. Love the play here by Lin, losing, using the Blade Master as distraction. And uh, the Grunts sent to the ally to help him creep up the strong Demon Hunter. Because Demon Hunter will be the most important hero here on their team. But they're just giving away the fountain. Apparently. I'm quite surprised to see them here being able to take that fountain creep. Oh, or perhaps they are not. Here comes the Demoner. The mana burn now, a super strong weapon. The problem for Colorful is, here in the early game battles, the archers aren't really strong. Archers would be the weakest part of the armies. Oh, and the Demoner might get surrounded here, almost did. DK secured the last hit, got the potion of healing, and indeed, they're getting the full camp here. Surround as well on the Blade Master. He gets out with the mana stone. Good mana burns. Almost all the mana gone now on the Orc Undead team. They're waiting for the second heroes. Now they're ready. The Naga is here. The Shadow Hunter as well. Should be joining at some point. And you can see the move speed on the grunts. They are so fast. Shadow Hunter back at home though. And now it's them with the early push. Lots of fiends here. Death Knight and five fiends. Looking for the borough cancels. Nice mana burn. There have basically no spells been used on their side. And the right clicks from Demon and Blade, not too shabby either. Demon are getting surrounded though by a ton of grunts here. He can be healed. He can be maybe even popped out. Oh, sick play by Lin. Popping out his ally out of the surround. I think he didn't get the walker kill. Oh, despite the coil, didn't get the walker. That's pretty annoying for 1 2 0. Lots of grunts for Lin as well. We're gonna get one kill here on the enemy. And in the meantime, Colorful is ex again expanding, as he has been doing almost all these games. But Lin has played a sacrificial role here so far. Blade Master really weak. Shadow Hunter really weak. But one hell of a Demon Hunter. Oh! Getting surrounded though. This time he's gonna have to TP. Kinda surprised he didn't try to pop him out this time. Big item picked up here, Claws plus 12 for the Shadow. Okay, this could be a strong Blade Master in the end, if he's given these Claws. Warren Chieftain also getting closer to level 4. Same for the DK. The Auras, the move speed, is going to be very strong this game. At the moment, the teams are leaving each other alone. We are in an extended creeping phase right now. What is there is again going for the Crypt Lord. KK has only grunts and a TC, by the way. <laughs> Nine grunts! And the Torn Chieftain. Giving the corner red as well, that's gonna be a big item here. Could be a big summon. Oh, the Scepter of Avarice. Scepter of Ma Mace Mastery. 
almost level 3. And it is... The Draconid guy. I think that guy has Breath of Fire and Cleave or something. It's a pretty good tank in the front line. Yo, Jenny Bretzelberg! With the resub, thank you! 94 months of Back to Warcraft awesomeness. Pop the champagne! Hell yeah! Looking forward to hang out again at Rara Land. Rara Land only a little more than a month away. On August 1st. In this TC, he wants to get off at least one good stomp. Lin now also expanding. Bottom right, very hard to get to that position. TC now reveals himself out of the shadows. First mana burn has been used against the Crypt Lord already. He's gonna get off a second burn, a second uh, stomp, I mean. Here you see the Dragonid guy. There's the Breath of Fire in blue color. He has the Devotion Aura, actually. That is also quite good. Okay, he's actually focused pretty quickly, though. Doesn't survive for too long. Demon Hunter taking a lot of damage. Heat Wave finds him. Invul use as well. Mana Potion on the Crypt Lord. Here's the next Impale. Mana Burns needed again to decrease these spells on the enemy side. Decent fight so far for 1 to 0. And KK. Double level up. Double level 4. Even more move speed now for the armies. Mana burn is needed once more, and there it is. Comes in just in time. The storm was a little bit too late. Supply-wise, we are still pretty even. Close encounter here between the two. Blade Master for Lin almost going down. Mana potion, heal wave, saving him just in time. But a lot of their units seem to be dying one by one right here. Gonna have to fall back. One more heal wave comes through. Retreating now to Lin's main base. No, wait, that's Colorful's main base, actually. Oh, having the shop here is great for clarities. Supply, very even. 1 to 0, though, seems to have the strongest army now, for sure. Lich, almost level 3. Great items on him. Death Knight, level 4. TC, level 4. TC can only provide the aura, but he's got a great aura, and he's a great tank. And looks to me like this is a great fight for 1 to 0 and KK. A fifth map might be in store for us here. Yimara again taking lots of damage. Impale finds him. Needs to be staffed soon if he wants to save him. But the staff isn't used. Jedi Hunter had the staff. Lin buying the staff but not using it to save the ally. And with the demon dead, that might be the end. Not having the ring of protection on the demon Hunter I think was a mistake here. Two expansions might not be enough. Oh, more grunts are dying. Everything's basically dead. Oh, and now the heal ward. Absolutely insane. Healing up the army in the back. There we go. Yeah, in retrospect, this strat made a little sense because with the TC and DK Grunted Fiends, they had a really strong early tier 1 army. And with that tier 1 strength, they couldn't really be bullied by the Blade Demon. Especially because the Archer army on Colorful was so weak. Smart play. With that early power, they got the center, they got a good lead, strong heroes. One last ditch effort from Lin trying to help out his ally, but the army look is, looks tiny right here. Demon Hunter has been rezzed from the tavern, finally staffing back in. That is looking beyond hopeless. I love these grunts. These grunts and raiders with a double move speed aura. So good. They look like frenzy ghouls.
Blade Master. And Demon are both dead. And that is game. GG is called. And the 2 2 is achieved. And the fifth map will have to be played to be our decider. The team here of 1 to 0 and KK seem to be in good spirits. The smiles have returned to their faces. And they still have a chance to join their countrymen in the upper bracket grand final. Upper bracket final, I mean. Yeah, a key part of this game was also the fact that Lin didn't have a Farseer. Remember map 3, where the Farseer and Demon Hunter, early aggression, was able to pick off many of the fiends right away. Two of the fiends taken out in the early game. That was a big deal. That was not the case here. With the Blade Master, the late game will be looking strong for you, but the early game, not so impressive. And the TC DK, early group up, really strong. But only seems to be really good if you can move to... Uh, big points of interest together on the map. Especially on LT in the middle at the fountain. That made perfect sense. And for map number five, our decider will be Tidewater Glades. And there, a TC could also make sense. There's big creep camps, one next to the uh, uh, next to the other in the middle. You could move from one to one Join forces, grunts, strong tanks, fiends, strong damage dealers in the early game. This strat looked really good. Despite the fact that the TC will get mana burned, just his uh, right clicks and the move speed he grants, the good tank that he is, plus the grunt support he gives, looks quite good. Looks quite good. After this series, of course, we're going to be uh, far from done with the day. Our 1v1 section will then begin with a 2v2 over for the day. And we're going to have two banger matches today, indeed. 1 to 0 against Kao, no, excuse me, Happy against Kao first, and 1 to 0 against Sok after. I am so excited for that game, by the way. I hope that I'm not overhyping this game mentally for myself. Uh, sometimes that happens when you get a little bit too excited. But hopefully this will be the exciting match we're hoping for. And Happy versus Kaho also. I wonder what that's going to look like. Happy's on a long, long win streak against Kaho, as he is against almost every Night Elf out there. But the new patch has changed a lot. Ghoul Frenzy is a lot weaker these days, and that was the biggest problem for Night Elf for the longest time. The TC strategy was invented by Fly and Ted. When they played against Infi and TH. Oh, interesting. I don't even remember Fly and Ted playing together. I know that Ted was oftentimes playing with, uh, what's this guy called? Hi you or something? We saw him quite a few 2v2s. But I don't remember him playing with Fly. Fly, of course, one of the most successful 2v2 players right now. He and Infi are the back to back champs in the 2v2 season. Oh, wait. I was wondering, didn't they win more than just one? And indeed, Flight and Feet won every single 2v2 tournament so far. That's pretty sick. Last month, they took first 
and Moonfolk is second. And then the month before that, it was the same. They took first, Moon Focus took second. And the month before that, which was February, I think, um, Flying Infi first, TH and Lin second. So also TH and especially Lin were able to get far before in this tourney. Good news here for both these teams is even the loser will still have a chance. We'll drop into the lower bracket to play on tomorrow. And also the winner tomorrow will be playing in the upper bracket final. So here we go. Decision time. Farseer, Dimahano this time against TC, DK, Fiends. Lin making the adjustment, seemingly having a uh, similar conclusion as me, that the Blade Master wasn't strong enough early game to battle against the enemy team with a double aura combined forces. Of course, you have to play Demander, there's no way around it. Against uh, Undead and possible TC, you have to play Demon. And you really want to level him quickly as well, if you can. And that's also where the fast here is quite nice. With the wolves you can harass early and your grunts can assist the demon in creeping. Fast here though, creeping a little bit at the start here, I'm quite surprised to see. Both teams at the moment creeping together. So far, Colorful and Lin looking quite a bit faster with the help of the Ancient of War creep. And since the DK was delayed for so long, they take a nice little head start. And the Demon Hunter might again be the first hero to reach that level 3. Although we can also see a clear priority of the Farseer trying to get a fast level 2 and 3 as well. Not harassing at all, this is quite unusual. Normally the Farseer is always early game harassing in this matchup. But not here. Of accuracy, it's quite the nice item for one to there to find more damage on his entire ranged army. Scourge Bone Chimes on the other side, and there we have the Demon 3. Oh, I might get surrounded right away. Indeed, he is. Does he want to pick that big invuln already? Pop it, I mean. Yes, he does. Kind of annoying that one's gonna be gone for the big fight, but it is what it is. And good mana burns. Demon Hunter now. Looking quite strong at this early part of the game. But still a sick move speed you can see here. 20% bonus move speed already on the combined forces of 1 to 0 and KK. Linen Colorful with the experience lead. And 
going for the first big attack. DK trying to get a little free before TPing to the ally. It's gonna take a little while though. KK suffering in his main base as we speak. Big heal potion, very nice find. Now we're gonna TP it. Uh, burn is there. Almost no kills though. Only a single archer. And one grunt I guess have gone down so far. Okay, now more follow. More grunts to die. Zero can now make use of the orc shop for clarity. That is always an undead dream. Demoner chasing after, looking for the mana burn. One more stomp was almost ready, but not quite yet. But a coil is. No second hero yet for one to zero and KK. Lich only begins now, perhaps a bit late. Tier three and slaughterhouse was first. They're kiting backwards. With all this move speed, they can kite quite well. DK hurt, but he's got the heal potion. Pretty even game still so far, I would say. TC for Lin is pretty frail. No rings, no levels. One zero doesn't want to have to waste that heal potion. KK losing two burrows. That does hurt. Heal pot was passed. TC is carrying it now. KK is very supply blocked. Oh man, the burrows. Oh lord, oh lord. Here we can see the strength of the Farseer level 3. Blade Master at this point in the game would never be able to do the same as the Farseer is achieving right now. Frost Armor first on the Lich. I don't hate it at all. When you go Nova, you only have two Novas on level 1. Or maybe even less against the Demon Hunter. TP out now, and there was a lot of losses for KK. Five peons have gone down. Ooh, KK is absolutely crippled here. Very strong attack. Colorful and Lin getting ahead in this mid game. Far ahead. 1 to 0 will have to do almost all of the heavy lifting here. Now close to two. He's certainly gonna need that level up for the Nova. California Lynn here now with the big big supply. Oh my god, did KK. Still doesn't have enough burrows or peons or mining. Demon finds the root bracers again, dude. Colorful, super lucky finding that item so many times. Oh, whoops. One grunt here getting caught. Violin, maybe a small mistake. And Colorful will again expand. Oh, the grunt! Yikes. One grunt goes down here. Creeping that camp against the storm, not so easy. You can see how much damage, though, this army is doing against magic, uh, against heavy armor. KK okay, took a long time to creep this camp.
Big items, by the way. What was it? Hold on, let me close the pop-up. Um, Potion of Restoration on Lin against Scroll of Restoration. Great item for KK here. Really good levels, especially on Colorful. Four and three on his two heroes. And the same will be the case for Lin here. Oh, and Calibre's now going tier three for the first time. Maybe going for Master Talents. Very rarely seen in 2v2. One to zero, lots of gold. Not breaking just yet. KK is still at only 41 supply. Now has the last burrow finishing, finally. Expansion getting scouted here by the illusion. When is the time to fight? Then in colorful, both breaking into upkeep. They're gonna have a huge army. One to zero and KK are biding their time. KK needs to be sent some lumber, I think, by one to zero. One to zero breaking now. He's also going to have a very strong army. Starting to upgrade it as well. One to zero's army might now be, might now be so strong that two enemies have to deal with him. So we can kind of pull away the enemy team. That might be the plan right now. He could pull both teams away and then KK could try to destroy the expansion with his grunt army. That would be tactically pretty smart. Team Hunter staffed home. He can't fight that army all by himself, though. Lin was expecting this play, however. Not gonna get fooled by it. TP in now. Team Hunter in trouble right away. Staff is here, but the Ankh is still gonna be forced in the end. Death Knight taking quite a bit of damage here as well. Gonna have to TP out next. Farseer though! What about him? Farseer right clicks. Oh, he goes down! Couldn't save him anymore! Need to buy a staff with a TC, I think, to try to save him. TC comes in. Perfect stomp against the ranged army. Beautiful play here by KK120. Get off two stomps before the demon is there. If you could now be ensnared to control him, that would be perfect. Invuln! Ah, didn't use the invuln. Mistake there. He got burned again. But a good fight. 1 to 0 with a powerful attack. Forced all those items, killed off the Farseer. Talons now being uh, moved into Crow, was very strong against the Destroyers, partly getting webbed, but some still come through. He's level 5, could stomp soon again. Oh, the Scroll of Restoration also works on Destroyers, by the way. More mana again for more uh, damage on the Destro is pretty sick. Don't think I've ever seen that before. Oh my god, that Scroll of Restoration is so insane. Now I got caught as well. 1 to 0 and KK might just be doing it. It seemed like Colorful and Lin had the big lead this game, but smart movement. Playing around their strengths super well. And the Demon Hunter took so long to return to the fight. Still lots of mana on the undead side. Mana burn does connect, but the army is getting absolutely blasted. Demon Hunter as well. Close to going down and he will fall. No Naga left to save him with the staff. Everything else is being picked apart now. 1-0 again benefiting from his late game power. 
More kills, Nova and Nuke here leading to more death. And now once there is four, three, three heroes. Super, super strong. TC level five for KK, almost level six. Take out the wisps as well with the impale, nicely done. Lich now level four all of a sudden. With the death knight, almost five. Yeah, the talons are really good in the mid game. Against the grunt army with magic damage and fire fire, very, very strong. But late game? Against ranged undead? And raiders? Not good. Not good at all. Oh, but this stomp is good. Real good. And another beautiful impale. Oh my god, that hit literally the entire army. And that is gonna do it. GG it is. 1-0, and Chao Keke, successful. Map 1 went to them, then the next two slipped away, but they made the right adjustment, smart strategic play. The TC first, the TC first is here, and it's here to stay. Even against Demon Hunter, TC with the aura, TC with the stats. Looking really, really good here. Impressive showing by them, the only top undead orc team in the world make it into the winner bracket final.